I'm hanging on by a thread and all I'm clinging to is prayers. Hey guys, welcome and thank you for joining us for Kid Worship. Wherever you are, we're so glad you're with us. Though we might not be together in person, we can hang out like this and still hear God's word, learn more about him, and grow in his amazing grace and love. So thank you, thank you for being with us. Hey, you know how we started out. You know, we always start out. Whatever we're doing, the best place to always start is through prayer. Whether it's our day whether it's a sporting game, whether it, you know we're struggling with something, we're afraid, whatever's going on, the best place to always start is prayer. So why don't we start together prayer? And since I've already got my characters on my hands, we're gonna do three claps, but it might sound a little funny, all right? Here we go, three claps. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your love and grace. We thank you that you can do anything. You can make the impossible possible. You can do miracles. So help us to first trust in your power and know that nothing is beyond you. There is nothing in this world we will ever face that is bigger or stronger or better or smarter than you. So we can trust you no matter what. And Lord, whatever we're going through, help us to remember that you can you can help us through it. You can give us a miracle. You can fix it. You can work in it. So help us when we're when we're afraid or we're dealing with something to come to you and know that you are the all-powerful, almighty God who can do anything. So again, Lord, we can trust you in everything. Lord, just help us this week to have an awesome week. Bless us in all that we do. Keep us safe um, from, from anything and let us know how much you love us each and every day. We love you and we thank you and we praise you. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, does anybody remember what we're talking about? It's not parables anymore. We stopped with parables. We're on something new. Start doing an M. It's not M and M's. It's miracles. That's right. We're talking about miracles. And does anybody remember the miracle we saw last week? I'll give you a hint. It had to do with 10 people. And one of them was a Samaritan. You remember? That's right. Jesus healed the 10 lepers. Not leopards. Lepers. Lepers, remember, we said was this bad disease that when people got it, they had to live outside of the city. They couldn't even be with their family because they were so scared that, that they would spread leprosy to other people. And so remember, in our text, we saw that the 10 lepers were kind of hanging out together and they were all sitting outside the city. Of course, they were sad because they weren't with their family and they didn't have food and, and they didn't have jobs. It was just terrible. And they were all sitting outside the city gates when Jesus came walking by with his disciples and they said, Son of David, King Jesus, have mercy on us. Now, Jesus shouldn't have gone over to him because remember, people stayed away from lepers. But Jesus came over to him and he talked to him and he said, what would you have me do? And they said, please have mercy on us and heal us. And then instead of touching them or healing them immediately, Jesus said, go and show yourself to the chief priest. Now, uh, really? You want us to go show? I've, I've got leprosy. Go, show yourself to the chief priest. But I still have le Okay, you're Jesus. I trust you. And so as they were going... To show themselves to the chief priest, they were healed. Their act of faith had to come first. And then on the way to the chief priest, they were healed. And there was 10 lepers, but only one, the Samaritan, came back. Ah, oh, Jesus, thank you for healing me. Ah, uh, you're welcome. It's no problem. I'm the son of God. can handle it. Uh, by the way, how many lepers were there? Um, there were 10 of us total. Um, and how many came back? Um, just me. Uh, hmm. I think more people would say thank you to Jesus. Well, I thank you. I appreciate you. All right, thank you. All right. So Jesus healed the ten, but only the one came back to say thank you. Remember, we said, A, God can do anything. But B, when God does give us blessings, we need to be thankful. We need to be appreciative. We need to acknowledge that it is a gift from our loving God. One of the other ways to acknowledge God's grace and his love is by worshiping him. So here we go, guys. We got a worship song for you. I want everybody up. Come on now. We got to get up and worship God. That's one of the ways we can say thank you. We don't want to be like those nine that didn't come back. We want to be like that one that says thank you. And you can do that with your voices right now. So everybody up.
So now it's time to guess that Bible verse. Are you ready? All right, here we go. So today, our Bible verse comes from the New Testament. I know we often come from the New Testament on, on our online kid worship, but it's still from the New Testament. You got to guess? How many books are in the New Testament? All right, 27. So you got one in 27 chance of getting it right. All right, There's some good guesses. I might have heard it. I don't know. Let's see. All right, it's not a letter from Paul. We've done a lot of letters from Paul, but this one is not a letter from Paul. You got it? Got any guesses? Remember, how many books did Paul write? Do you remember? About 13 books in the New Testament, 13 to 27 came from Paul. And remember we said four were written, were letters written to people, and the rest, the other nine, were letters written to churches. That's right. And so this is none of those. Got a guess? All right, here we go. It's not a letter right in the new testament there's this thing this is an old word we don't use it as much anymore but there's a word called epistles you might have heard that the epistles are just just a fancy word for letters right so it's not a letter so that takes out first and second peter that takes out james that takes out first second and third john that takes all those out because those were all epistles or letters so it's not a letter you gotta guess it really narrows it down all right, I'm going to give you a big, big hint. It's a gospel. It's a gospel. All right. Do you remember? I taught you a couple weeks ago what the word gospel means. Does anybody remember what the word gospel actually means? It means good news. The good news of Jesus. That's literally. So when you hear, uh, you know, saying the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Luke, the gospel of John, we're saying the good news according to Matthew who wrote it. The good news of Jesus according to Luke who wrote it. So it's one of the four gospels. Say it with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's right. All right. Which one? All right, I heard it, but we're going to make you guess to make sure we get it right. All right. The author of this gospel was not a physician. Who was the physician? Luke. That's right. Luke was a physician. And he also, what was the other book Luke wrote? He wrote the gospel of Luke and he wrote the book of Acts. That's right. Luke the physician wrote Acts and the gospel of Luke, but it's not either of those. All right. One last clue. I think you get it on this one. He was a tax collector. The person who wrote it, also known as Levi, was a tax collector. Boom. Yeah, that's right. It is the gospel of Matthew, the good news of Jesus according to Matthew. And it's Matthew chapter 19, big chapter or big number 19. We're flipping through our Bibles. We get the big number 19, little number 26, big number 19, little number 26, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. And I'm going to read it for you. It says, Jesus looked at them and he said, with man, 
This is impossible. Impossible means it can't happen. It can't be done. So he says, with man, with humans, with us, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Let me read that all together. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And so that goes right into what we're learning about in our miracle series is that there are things that we can't do but God can, and we have to trust God and, and know that he is all-powerful, he is all-knowing. And again, nothing we will ever face in his life is bigger or stronger or better than God. So we can trust God in all things and, and go to him no matter what's going on in our life. G nothing is impossible for God. That's such a great reminder. We're going to see that in, in our story today. But we can trust God no matter what. There's some things we can't do, but God still can. And one of those things we can't do is save ourselves, right? We can't do enough good to get rid of the sin that's in our lives. We just can't. So we have to depend on Jesus. God loves you so much, he sent Jesus out of heaven. Think about that. Jesus was up in heaven where you and I want to go one day in the glorious place where there's no sin, there's no sickness, there's no disease. It's just awesome. God, Jesus was up there and he came down to this earth and he, he wrapped himself in our humanity and our flesh so that he could live like us. But the difference is he didn't sin. Never sin. But even though he didn't sin, he got accused of a bunch of things by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the leaders of the church. And they put him to death. Not because he deserved it, but because he accepted it for our sake. And the crazy thing is, any time during that, Jesus could have called down legions of angels and they would have defended him and they would have stopped it. But he stayed on that cross for you and I. And because he died, he took our sin, our, our punishment for sin on himself. And he gave us his righteousness so we could be with God forever and ever. And he died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose on the third day. And now if we believe on him as our Lord and our Savior, we get to be with God forever and ever in heaven one day. We can't be saved on our own. But if we believe in Jesus and ask him into our heart, he will save us. For us, it's impossible to get to heaven. But because of Jesus, because of God, it is possible now to believe on him. That's a great reminder of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, guys, Whew. let's say this Bible verse again. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, and it says, Jesus looked at him and he said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Never forget that. With God, all things are possible. Hey, guys, you've been sitting listening so well for so long. I appreciate that, but why don't we play a game, get you up, get you moving. All right, everybody on your feet, here we go. I'm <laughs> 
So for today, our miracle story that we're going to learn about comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. So we heard about Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew for our Bible verse. For their, our miracle story, we're going to hear about John, chapter 11. I'm going to tell you, in chapter 11, it's the shortest verse in the Bible. Pretty cool. little trivia fact for you. I'll tell you it in just a minute. But what happens is Jesus has some really good friends. Their names are Mary, Martha, and and Lazarus and they live in a little town called Bethany and Jesus was around that town for a while but then he had actually gone on a trip and gone away and his friend Lazarus got really really sick and they sent him a letter they got a note to him that said hey Lazarus is sick he might die and Jesus didn't come back immediately Jesus finished what he was doing and then when he came back Lazarus had actually passed away and so when Jesus is coming into the city Lazarus' sister Mary runs out to him and she says Jesus if you would have only been here our brother wouldn't have died and Jesus says hey didn't I tell you if you believe in me you will see the resurrection you will see powerful things and Jesus comforts her but lets her know hey with what would we learn in our Bible verse with God all things are possible so he's saying don't give up hope I'm about to do something really cool so Jesus gets to the place where they had buried Lazarus. Remember, just like with Jesus, they put him in a tomb, they rolled a stone over it. And, and so there's all these people crying and these people, they actually start to attack Jesus and said, hey, if you were here, Lazarus wouldn't die. And it's just this crazy scene. And this is where we get the shortest verse in the Bible. It says, Jesus wept and Jesus wept to be literal. And Jesus is weeping for his friend. He's weeping for the power of sin and death that it has on this world because he hasn't died to defeat it yet. And he's weeping that people don't trust him. So he, he weeps, but then he does this really cool thing. He says to roll the stone away from Lazarus' tomb. And Martha, the other sister, remember Mary met him at the town. Martha comes over and says, Jesus, he's been dead for four days. The, the, he's already smelling. There's already an odor. Do not roll that stone away. See, back then... The Jewish people had this belief that on the fourth day, your soul left your body. And so they figured, There's, this is hopeless. This is pointless. His soul is gone. Not even God can do anything about this. But what did our verse from Matthew tell us? Nothing is impossible with God. So Jesus says, roll the stone away. And so then Jesus prays to the Father. And he says, Father, I know you hear me. And, and, and I know you're going to do what I ask, but I'm saying this so they'll hear it. They'll understand and, and they'll trust you more. So he prays to God and asks God for a miracle. And remember, God can do anything. And so Jesus stops praying and he says, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man, the man who had been dead for four days and is stinking, gets up. And walks out of the tomb. And he's got all these bandages on him. He's wrapped kind of, you know, like you see with mummies. They would mummify him back then. He's got all these bandages on him. And Jesus says, unwrap him. And Lazarus is alive. 
It's crazy. Nobody believed it could happen. Nobody believed that God could even control death. It was an amazing miracle that showed the power of God. But here's the one thing we have to learn from that miracle. Lazarus was raised from the dead, which means he will pass away, or he did. He would pass away again one day. When we believe on Jesus, we're not raised from the dead. We're resurrected. And when we're resurrected, it means we will never die again, but we will live in God's perfect eternal kingdom, heaven, forever and ever and ever. Jesus was resurrected. He'll never die again. He sits up in heaven on his throne as the King of kings, Lord of lords, in charge of the world. That's such a great news. So in this, in this verse, we see Jesus' power to call a dead man back to life, which is amazing but we're reminded that when we believe on jesus he'll call us back one day when we pass away hopefully many 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 years from now when we pass and we will get to be with him in heaven forever and ever and ever what an awesome miracle what a great lesson about the power of god it is amazing we can trust god with anything because as our bible verse said nothing nothing not even raising people from the dead is impossible for God. That is awesome. So one of the great best ways we can acknowledge that God is all powerful and all knowing is by worshiping him and just letting him know how awesome we think he is. So I want everybody up. Let's worship God today. Come on, man. Everybody up. Everybody up. Then we're going to worship the God who raises people from the dead. That is awesome. Let's worship. your left hand on your hip, put your right hand on your head, shuffle to the left, now shuffle to the right, to the right hand shuffle, 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 my name is Jay of the jungle and I like to make it funky, Your left hand on your head. Shuffle to the front. Now shuffle to the back. Put your left hand on your hip. Put your right hand on your head. Shuffle to the front. Now shuffle to the back. To the right hand shuffle. guys welcome back it's time for a little lesson trivia let's see what you learned from today all right so real quick where was our bible verse from from for today can't even talk where was our bible verse for today from that's a lot of f's in that from for for all right where was it all right it, it not not our story our story comes from the gospel of john chapter 11 but where was our bible verse the gospel of matthew chapter 19 
verse, anybody remember the verse? 26, there you go, Matthew 19, 26. And it said that some things are impossible for man, but what's impossible for God? Nothing, right? All things are possible for God. Very good, Matthew 19, 26. All right, so let's jump to our story. What were the name of Jesus' three friends? Remember I told you this, he had three friends, two of them were sisters and their brother, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. That's right, Lazarus. What happened to Lazarus when Jesus went on a, a journey or a trip? That's right, he got really, really sick and he passed away. He passed away. Where did they put Lazarus? That's right, they put him in a tomb, they rolled the stone away, or rolled the stone in front of it, a lot like they did with Jesus. All right. When Jesus got there, what did he tell them to do to the tomb? What did he say to do to the tomb? He said, roll the stone back. Move the stone. And what did Martha come to him and say? She said he had been dead for how many days? That's right. Four days. Four days. And he's already starting to... That's right. Smell. He's been dead for four days. He's starting to smell Jesus. Just leave him there. Stop messing. Let's go on. But that's not what we learned. We learned that God has the power to do anything and so what did Jesus do before he raised Lazarus? He prayed. He prayed. Now, I'm going to see this this one. You, you're going to have to have come to, uh, to kid worship or to Awana at our church to get this one. But for the rest of you, you can learn something from it. Um, what did Moses do that he didn't pray about that got him in trouble and caused him not to be able to go into the promised land? You, we're going to see that where Moses messed up, Jesus didn't. But do you remember? What did he forget to do? That's right. He forgot to pray before he struck the rock. Remember, God said, strike the rock and let the water come out, but pray first. And he didn't. He got mad. And he struck the rock twice, and he never prayed. And he never gave the, the, the credit, the glory to God. And God had to punish Moses for it. Uh, and this cool thing is here we see Jesus doing the right thing and praying before he calls his friend Lazarus out of the tomb. While we're in John chapter 11, what's the shortest verse in the Bible? And Jesus wept. That's right. And Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. I always love to get in that one in trivia. All right. So when Lazarus came out of the tomb, what did he have on him? Jesus said, y'all got to take some stuff off him. What did he have on him? That's right. He had all those bandages and cloths. That, they called them the burial cloths. He had those all wrapped up. And Jesus said, I'm binding. Because think about it. I mean, the man's been dead. And for four days, and now he wakes up, and he's all wrapped up. I'm sure it's crazy for him, too. All right, that's that's great, great miracle, great reminder of power of God. Remember, Matthew 19, 26, what is impossible for God? Nothing. That's right. Nothing is possible for God. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He is almighty. And that's why it's so awesome to get to worship him and talk to him and know he hears us in our prayers. It's so awesome. All right, guys. Hey, listen, I hope you had an awesome, awesome week. Uh, pray that you know if you're traveling anywhere for the 4th of July that you're safe. Be safe. Be safe around fireworks. But, guys, we just pray you have an awesome week. We miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Take care. God bless.